Every project begins with an idea, then a plan, and eventually the idea is turned into reality. Before constructions begin, architects spend a reasonable amount of time planning and creating designs. Often these designs are correctly executed and the owners get themselves a new, functioning property. But sometimes, plans fail. Difficult to design a tower block, and this one curving in a very interesting way. It's very clever. Sometimes, halfway through construction, engineers and architects notice a defect somewhere. What happens when that happens? You'll find out in the build-up of the 15 most expensive construction mistakes in the world. Unfinished buildings demolished. It took 45 seconds to bring down these 15 high-rise buildings that had been unfinished for seven years. Construction of the complex, named Sunshine City II, located in the southwestern city of Kunming in China, began in 2011. Soon after, the developer ran out of money and sold it to another company. By 2013, work on the residential project stopped. These partially built structures were caused by China's urban development model that created ghost towns in parts of the country. While developers took on heavy debt because of the ever-rising housing prices, local governments started huge infrastructure projects to boost the economy. Although some of these ghost towns filled up later, some never recovered, and many newly built houses struggle to find occupants, and partially built ones. Like Sunshine City II, couldn't get funds to finish construction. In 2020, another company acquired the complex and all its debt but noticed defects in the buildings. So the developer decided to demolish them all, and in their place construct new lower-rise apartment buildings. For many, watching the buildings get blown up was the most exciting moment ever. With 4.5 metric tons of explosives installed at 85,000 detonation points on the buildings, Sunshine City II came tumbling down, and in 45 seconds, it was over. The buildings that had been standing there for almost a decade ceased to exist. There were issues with the apartment size, rainwater entered the basement due to the long unfinished time of the project, and the foundation had soaked in water for a long time. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. While many buildings collapse or are demolished because of man-made mistakes, some are affected by natural disasters like earthquakes. Earthquakes cause ground shaking, which is the primary cause of damage to man-made structures. The shaking can turn loose soil into liquid during an earthquake, and this can weaken the foundations of a building and result in collapsing or sinking. This is what happened to this building. In February 2018, an earthquake hit Taiwan. It shook a major city. People died and structures collapsed. The construction here is one of the affected buildings. Over 15 deaths were recorded and 285 injuries were reported. What do you think about this? Anything you want to add? Any contribution? We always love to hear from you. Drop your opinion in the comment section with the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Tacoma Narrows Bridge Construction of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge began in September 1938. It was the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Construction workers nicknamed the bridge Galloping Gertie because from the moment the deck was built, it began to move vertically in windy conditions. You'd wonder why this didn't bother them. When it opened for traffic on July 1, 1940, the motion had not stopped. On the morning of November 7th, that same year, the suspension bridge collapsed in 40 mile per hour winds with the deck swinging back and forth in an alternating twisting motion before tearing apart. The bridge didn't even last five months. The construction workers shouldn't have overlooked the moving deck at the initial stage. Two cars had been on the bridge at the time of the accident. One contained Leonard Coatsworth, Judy Jackox, and Arthur Hagen. The three of them were able to crawl to safety, but they lost some valuable things. In Coatsworth's report, he said he could hear concrete cracking around him. He started walking back to his car to get his dog, but was thrown before reaching it. In fact, the vehicle began to slide from side to side on the roadway. Then he understood what was happening and crawled 1,500 feet back to shore. With bruised, swollen hands and bleeding knees, he watched from the toll plaza as the bridge finally collapsed and his car fell into the narrows. <laughs> Sydney Opera House The original plan for the Sydney National Opera House had a four-year timetable and a $7 million budget. However, in the end, it took 14 years and $102 million to complete. 
That's a lot more money, right? It's over 10 times the initial budget. What could have happened? Let's find out. Danish architect Jim Utzon won the architecture competition held by the New South Wales government in 1957 for the construction of the building. All the stakeholders involved didn't pay attention to time or cost limits. A red book containing the plans, reports, and sections were presented. He was given the go-ahead to begin, and with a small team of engineers and other subcontractors, they got to work. The problem started when the client, which was the state of New South Wales, became an obstacle by requesting changes during the course of the construction. Of course, this resulted in a delay, but it got worse when the public became stakeholders and became interested in the project too. After some years, there was a change in government, and if that wasn't enough to complicate things, he walked out of the project and took his plans with him. The guys who took over the project had to come up with new designs based on the current structure of the Opera House. After 17 years of complications and redesigns, the House Sydney Opera House was inaugurated in 1973 by Queen Elizabeth II. Today, it's recognized as one of the best-known iconic buildings and a global symbol of Australia. <laughs> Leaning Tower of Pisa Today, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is one of the most legendary buildings in the world. What many don't know is there was a time when architects were worried it would collapse. When the bell tower was constructed in 1173, the engineers overlooked that the sand and clay foundations were softer to the south. When they added the story, they realized something was wrong. But as the construction guys did with the Tacoma Bridge, they continued building and even added five more stories. Now, it wasn't just a leaning building, it was a slightly curved one. We guess it wasn't that bad because nobody really panicked till eight centuries later. The 183-foot-tall tower was 16 feet from the vertical. It was cool, though. Physicists saw it as a gravity-testing spectacle, and tourists saw it as another place to tick off their bucket list. But there's only so much a building can tilt before it becomes a disaster. In January 1990, the tower was closed to the public and remained that way for 11 years due to safety reasons. They did a lot of work on the building and removed many things from it. Heavy bells, water, sand, and clay. And so the building started to straighten out on its own. The tower doesn't do a lot of moving anymore. It probably doesn't even move at all. But it survived a lot of earthquakes, and it's believed that it'll stick around for a few more centuries. Mm -hmm. The Aeon Center After Willis Tower, Trump International Hotel and Tower in St. Regis, Chicago, the Aeon Center is the fourth tallest building in Chicago. The 83-floor, 1,136-foot high skyscraper is located in the Chicago Loop, Chicago, Illinois, United States. The architect who designed the project, Edward Durrell Stone, thought masonry buildings conveyed a feeling of strength that glass buildings did not. Could this be because glass buildings are fragile? The reason they say you don't throw stones in a glass house? Anyway, he made the Aeon building at a time when glass and steel buildings were the norm. The structure of the building is a vertical square tube. The elevators and bathrooms are in the central core of the building so that the surrounding space is open and workable. You may be thinking, the building sounds perfect. What could have possibly happened to it? Well, if you visit it, instead of a marble-clad building, you'll find a building clad in North Carolina granite, all thanks to Chicago weather. While the construction was ongoing, they discovered the marble was cut too thin for Chicago's extreme temperature changes. Because heat causes permanent expansion in marble, the exterior side of the marble was expanding. This was a safety hazard, so the marble was removed and replaced with two-inch thick granite. Yes, this wasn't the architect's initial plan, but Mr. Stone still got to build the house with stone. And despite the drama, the building looks pretty good and is one of Chicago's most appreciated structures. <laughs> Ray and Maria Stata Center While many praise the Ray and Maria Stata Center and call it one of the Pritzker Prize-winning architect Frey Gehry's best works, there are many who aren't thrilled about the building. Architecture columnist for the Boston Globe, Robert Campbell, wrote that the Stata is always going to look unfinished and looks like it's about to collapse. Another man, the former president of Boston University, John Silber, said the building really was a disaster. Now, why did these guys say these things about this building? After construction, Gary and the construction company were sued because of the leakages, cracks, and drainage problems. The center design of the building also appears to be falling on top of each other. This is where meeting rooms, offices, and classrooms are located. While people blamed him, Gary blamed value engineering. 
which means that some parts were left out of the design in the construction in order to save costs. So he argued that the problem was in the construction. However, some people believe the problem was in the design, which he admitted to using software to create. What if the software isn't trusted after all and is the reason for the design mistakes? The status center looks very beautiful and different but can hardly be considered good architecture because it doesn't reach the strength requirement. But the building's pretty cool. The reversed structural algorithms create disorder and embodies the antithesis of nature's organized complexity. City Group Center The construction of the City Court building, now known as the Midtown Building, was completed in 1978 and it was considered innovative for its time. It has a 45-degree angular roof and a base of four stilt-like columns. The structural engineer of the building, William Le Monsieur, was proud of what he and a couple of other people had created. At the time it was built, the City Court building was the seventh tallest in the world. Now, one engineering student phoned the engineer to ask about the locations of the columns in the structure and their effect on its stability. They reassured him that everything was perfect. The columns were in the proper position to resist quartering winds. He was so excited that he planned to make this concern a topic of discussion in his Harvard class. He was a professor and he was preparing for the class when it hit him. And he went, uh-oh, the student was right. After calculations and calculations, he realized it would only take a 1 in 16 year storm to bring down his building in contrast to the 1 in 500 year event it was assumed to be designed for. You can imagine the shock on his face when he discovered this. After trying to hide for the longest, Le Monsieur finally blew the whistle on himself and an emergency repair kick started. Save for that call from the curious student, the city court building would have been more than a nearly fatal flaw. John Hancock Center The construction of the John Hancock Center began in 1965 but stopped in 1967 because the building kept sinking due to its location beside a lake. So, 57 concrete casings had to be plunged into 10 feet wide holes and drilled 197 feet into bedrock. At the time, the center had the deepest foundation of any building. You may think that was the sole issue of the 60-story, 790 feet skyscraper in Boston, but it wasn't. There's also the failure of the falling windows. During its construction, some of the 10,344 large panels of glass that made the building shiny and reflective began to fall off. They had to cover one part of the building in plywood to replace the failed glass. That must have been one eventful loud scene. But the skyscraper turned out nice and is now an admired work of art. It's the first building to combine residential and commercial space together and the 13th largest building in the United States. One quick lesson from this for you is don't let your mistakes define you. <laughs> Three Mile Island all thanks to equipment failure and operator error, the accident at the Three Mile Island Nuclear Station in Pennsylvania is labeled as the most severe accident in U.S. commercial nuclear plant operating history. It led to the meltdown of the power plant's Unit 2 reactor and the release of a small amount of radioactive material. A stock open relief valve stopped the removal of heat from the Three Mile Island Unit 2 reactor's core, which was an essential function that prevented damage to the reactor. This malfunction caused the reactor to overheat hence the meltdown. About two million people in the nearest area were exposed to the radiation, but a good thing nobody died. In truth, there wasn't even an injury or direct health effects on the plant workers or people in the surrounding area. Government agencies also inspected the environment months after the accident. They collected samples of water, milk, air, soil, vegetation, and foodstuffs and found that the radioactive release from the accident had little effect on them. Oroville Dam In February 2017, 200,000 people were forced to evacuate the area along the Feather River in rural Northern California because of the Oroville Dam's main spillway failure. The main spillway was damaged in February by heavy rainfall during the 2017 California floods. The California Department of Water Resources had to stop the spillway flow to assess the damage and consider its next steps. Because a crack opened along the dam's spillway, engineers limited the amount of water it would release daily. There were consequences, however. Lake Oroville, the second largest reservoir in California, rose to unusually high levels. The hillside holding the dam started to dissolve under force. And this wasn't just a problem for the reservoir, but also for the 188,000 people who live nearby. 
As the residents evacuated the town, officials began to increase the amount of water released. It took about three months for the water to stop flowing and for repairs to start. If anything had gone wrong, the communities downstream would have been flooded. The amount spent on this was far more than the initial price. It showed that the earlier you pay for or repair infrastructure, the better, and delaying repairs may lead to accidents or double your expenses later. <sighs> Shanghai Tower Shanghai is a magnificent building, the world's next tallest skyscraper, only after Dubai's Burj Khalifa. The construction cost $2.1 billion and was finished in 2014. The skyscraper would have been perfect, or at least wouldn't have made it to this list if it didn't always have issues. In 2013, before the construction was completed, the tower was in controversy about it being on fire. You wouldn't blame anyone for believing that. On this particular day, something like fog surrounded the building. Shanghai had to calm the public by denying this rumor or assumption. What had happened was there was a factory fire in the neighboring town of Zhejiang, and the fog came from there. Many people didn't believe this back then. We wonder if, to date, they think the Shanghai government lied about the fire. Fast forward to 2020, and the 2,086-foot-tall skyscraper faced another slice of bad PR. 50 floors in the building were flooded, and clips of the chaos went viral on social media. There was water dripping from the ceilings and destroying office equipment and digital products. Shanghai Towers addressed the challenge with the leakage and claimed emergency repairs began immediately and the situation was under control. So Snowviets It was supposed to be the central building of the Medical University of Silesia, the pride of the Pharmaceutical and Diagnostic Center and the entire faculty of pharmacy. Construction began in 1978. It was to be a 14-story office building with technical and lecture facilities. However, the students, lecturers, and staff never got to see the launching of the facility because, in 1993, the construction was suspended and the abandoned building eventually became vacant. This happened because the Ministry of Health ceased to finance the project. The land was eventually sold, but selling the building posed a problem. It wasn't in good condition, and when that and the high cost of repairs were put into consideration, the decision to demolish it was made. After all, the cost of constructing a facility by current standards would be on the same scale as that of repairs. The demolition was in stages. It took months to complete. All the elements that could interfere with the landing had to be removed. Slowly, pieces of the external and internal structure began to disappear, like the windows. Finally, on November 17, 2016, an explosion took place and the remnants of the building fell to the ground. <laughs> Jeddah Tower It is the dream and plan of architect and designer Adrian Smith that the Jeddah Tower, located in Saudi Arabia, will be the first one-kilometer tall building. In January 2018, construction was halted on one-third completed building due to labor issues with a contractor after the 2017-19 Saudi Arabian purge. The tower's design is indeed one of a kind and unlike most buildings we've talked about, the owners and designer had a complete plan. They controlled building movements and had efficient and effective structural system solutions. The structure is already so big, so they decided to make the design simple. With all of these plans, we only hope that the world's tallest building to be eventually gets completed and takes its place before the current tallest building, Burj Khalifa, which was also designed by Smith. It will be a tragic waste of time, money, and resources a whole lot of concrete has gone into the structure already if the building remains as it is, or worse, taken down. Walkie-talkie turn walkie scorchy. Because of its distinctive shape that resembles a two-way radio handset, this commercial skyscraper has been nicknamed the walkie-talkie. Its origin name is 20 Fenchurch Street. The name of its address. The building is 525 feet tall and contains 38 stories the initial plan was for it to be 656 feet tall, but after thinking about its visual impact on the nearby St. Paul's Cathedral and Tower of London, its design was scaled down. After this, heritage groups were still concerned about the building's impact on society. People have openly revealed that they regret supporting the project because the developers made it a mess. The building's overall concave design creates a downdraft strong enough to knock people over. In the 12 months after its completion, the UK's Carbuncle Cup Awards named the walkie-talkie the ugliest British building. 
Can it be any worse? What agitated Londoners the most was the Sky Garden, the top three floors with stunning views across London skyline they had been promised was going to be a public space. When the garden was completed, it was nothing but a collection of expensive bars and restaurants, and you had to pre-book to enter. The building went very quickly from walkie-talkie to walkie-scorchy. Harmon Hotel Harmon Hotel was halfway done when in 2008 engineers found faults that made the building dangerous and uninhabitable. Although the original design was for it to be 47 stories tall, construction stopped at 26 floors. It would have cost about $21 million to fix the problems, but the continuous testing of the building made it unrepairable. Now the building wasn't just abandoned, it was demolished. From top to bottom, floor by floor, Harmon Tower was dismantled. It had cost $275 million to build and $173 million to take down. Can we even call it a hotel since it didn't host a single guest? Not one person checked in or ordered room service. Harmon never got to be a hotel. Next to the structure was the Cosmopolitan Hotel and across the street was a shopping center. Because of this proximity to other buildings, an implosion was impossible. Gradually, mainly behind a dark mesh, the building was taken apart. Pedestrians would walk by and see the 26 stories slowly becoming 25, 20, 5, 2, and then it was on ground level. Today, not many visitors to Las Vegas will know that Harmon Hotel once stood at that spot. After all, it's Vegas. Buildings go up and down all the time. Isn't it awful that after investing a ton of cash in building something, you're forced to take it down and even spend money on this as well? Having to abandon buildings or fix defects is also not the easiest thing to do. Here's a quick tip. Before you begin construction, go over the plans a billion times. Mm-hmm. <laughs>